Welcome to Come and See, your podcast for finding truth in a world of chaos. Brought to you by All for Jesus Living Waters Ministry. With host and founder, Richard Case, and co-host and retreat leader, Kathy Riccone. Today is our special guest day, where we will hear from a friend of the ministry who will share their insight and stories on truth in this chaotic world. And now your host, Richard Case. Welcome, everybody. This is guest day uh, uh, on Thursday, and we we just love it. Uh, Kathy, another great opportunity. Uh, We're having Jake and Mary Beckel, uh, and they live in, uh, let's see, numerous places. (laughs) (laughs) They live in Tampa, Florida, with uh, a lot of their kids and grandkids around there. And then they also have this beautiful place where we do retreats. They're leaders in Living Waters uh, in North Carolina. Uh, So Jake and Mary... uh, Tell us uh, a little bit about, uh, I know you're in North Carolina right now. Tell us about that house. How, how, what's, what's, uh, what's that all about? And then we'll have you share some of your, your story with us. Well, we uh, found this really by happenstance. Uh, we were looking for something in the mountains after we had sold our business or we're looking to sell our business in Tampa. And a friend of ours said, why don't you look in the mountains of uh, Western North Carolina? And uh, ultimately uh, we looked at a number of different properties that uh, didn't fit our expectations, but we, we really didn't know what we wanted. Uh, and then uh, our daughter, Stephanie, actually online found this property that had a relatively new house, but it had 240 acres of mm. property. That a oh, how perfect. <laughs> so it was February and it had, we were up in Asheville here and uh, it were about an hour north of Asheville. And uh, the realtor said, well, that, that doesn't fit any of the criteria you gave me. I said, well, we want to go look at it anyway. So we uh, drove the hour north of Asheville and ended up on this <laughs> property over two small bridges, which I was actually reluctant to drive over. <laughs> and uh, Richard knows what I'm talking about. Yeah, oh, yeah. Come to it. <laughs> and we drove up another couple hundred yards and we had to move some brush to get the, the, the vehicle through it. And we parked. Hmm. And he said, now we're going to take a hike up this uh, lumber trail. So... We hiked for probably about 45 minutes and it, you know, the, there's a brook running down both sides of the road and uh, the the bright, it was bright sunshine and it was probably about 1030 in the morning. And we got up into this, what they call a holler and uh, not something you'd call that in Florida, but that's what they call it here. And he said, now turn around and look at what your view is. And we, We looked out and we go, oh my goodness, this is exactly where we want to live. Oh, how perfect. uh, The price was uh, just way, way below what we expected to pay for it. And God provided that. And and, uh, we ended up here and we ended up with not only a house that was built in 06, and uh, only, someone had only lived in it for about four months, but we built a, mo- a house up here on the mountain. And uh, we have, it's kind of a family complex where we've done numerous retreats where we can bring in uh, actually uh, between 20 and 25 people to actually come yeah. in and uh, really enjoy what God has blessed us with here. Yeah. It, it's really spectacular. Yeah, and you got... Uh... Uh, three level, it's a three level home, uh, and uh, huge. Each each area is huge, massive gathering rooms and kitchens, and it's spect- It's really spectacular. Sounds like a perfect retreat house. Yeah, it's How so wonderful. It's so big, Kathy, that uh, uh, when I got to try to find Linda, I got to call her on the cell phone uh, in the house. <laughs> Which just, Linda couldn't find without the cell phone. Uh, or, or, or I just wait to uh, let her laugh, and then we'll find her from there, you know? So. Exactly, yeah. That's funny. Uh, well, tell us, uh, uh, and I know you're enjoying that place up there, and we do too, and it's a great place for retreats. 
so people who have a heart to uh, do a retreat in uh, that part of the country, we'd love to do them there. Uh, how did you each come to know Christ? Tell us about that, how you each came to know Jesus. Go ahead, Mary. Oh, my dad died in 1990, and um, his funeral was in a church because we'd always been members of this church in Lake Alfred where I was born and raised. And one of our children, Jake remembers it as Julie, I'm not sure who it was, but they were in a private Christian school. And she goes, she's looking around and she goes, why don't we ever go to church? <laughs> uh. Now we had, we had put our kids in the school, not because it was a Christian school, but our neighbors uh, had said it was a really good school, but they'll really cram religion down your throat. <laughs> I said, nah, Interesting. I said, I already had that done to me. I'm, I'm not interested. Uh, no, I believe there was a God. I believe that was a good person and stuff. Uh, I was 35 years old and uh, quite obviously had the head knowledge because of the, the religious group I had come out of. I mean, we heard the gospels, we heard the epistles and stuff, but no, nothing in our heart felt at all. So uh, we said, yeah, we can go to church. And we went to Seminole Presbyterian and that Sunday, and now Julie was first grade, John was second grade. Uh, and uh, we, have, we have five children, but uh, we were sitting in that pew and that preacher absolutely nailed us both. Yeah. It was like <laughs> he was talking to us. So I didn't, we didn't, I didn't grow up Presbyterian, so I didn't know what, how the, how the program worked, but a couple of days later, we get a call from the pastor, and he said, can I come and see you? And I said, sure. So he shows up at our home, and he said, well, what do you think of the service? And I said, well, it was really good. He said, uh, well, how do you, would you like to keep coming? And I said, well, yeah, I think, I think we both were safe there. And he looked at me like... <laughs> You were saved? <laughs> I said, yeah. I said, I understand now. It's salvation through Christ alone. I just didn't get it before. Mm. He goes, and he was looking at us like, wow, he, these two people really got it. <laughs> uh, for whatever reason, I mean, it was great that Mary and I both got it at the same time. Wow. And... Uh, Kind of the cliff notes of it, the next week we had gone back to uh, Mary's parents, so, which was about an hour away on Sunday because we typically didn't go to church. The next week we showed up at church, it was a different pastor. <laughs> so I'm going like, okay, I don't know what this is all about. But he talked about uh, getting in men's studies and women's Bible studies. So I plugged into a, a men's Bible study and and uh, I remember showing up at seven o'clock at Luby's cafeteria and there's probably mm -hmm. 20 men there from the mm -hmm. age of 18 to 80. <laughs> and uh, Pastor O'Dowd, he goes, okay, we're going to talk about, uh, I think he was in Ephesians or something. And he said, I said, before you start, uh, Pastor, could you, I don't understand, how do you know Jesus is God? <laughs> Everybody <laughs> at the table looked at me like, what? Who is it? <laughs> and uh, David O'Dowd goes, he'd want a great question. Let's start with that right there. Oh, I love it. And uh, I dug in my uh, type A personality, dug into it. I mean, it just, and just, just immersed in, in Christianity. It was really, wow. really good. And my whole family did. Yeah. The, just... the, th the, th the three that were actually in school there, uh, and then Jennifer, who was in college after her college, our oldest daughter professes, but, uh, uh, you know, she's still working on it. So, yeah. but, but we, that was kind of how we, we came to Christ. Wow. That's beautiful. That wow. And how many years ago was that now? That would have been 32 years ago. Wow. Wow. Beautiful. What a great story. Yeah. It's beautiful. But tell us, um, uh, back up a little bit and tell us how, how did you guys actually meet and get married, decide to get married? Uh, you, you want the short version? <laughs> I, <have. laughs> sweat, sweat. Uh, I was, went to school in North Dakota and uh, played college golf and I was going to come to Florida to, uh, 
think about playing the professional golf tour. And so I found out in Central Florida, they had a qualifying site for the US Open. Yep. At that time, if you qualified, if you made the cut at the US Open, you get to, you'd get to play the next week on the tour. And if you made enough money, you made the cut again, you could actually play, play the next week. So you didn't have to go through qualifying school. So I had sent for the information in those days, there wasn't an internet. So you filled out a little postcard and I got this poster, <laughs> golf, tennis and all this stuff. And I had it on my wall. So about six, eight months later, I moved to Florida. I'm in central Florida. Uh, fraternity brother and I are living together. I actually work for him in, in another town about 20 miles away as a pharmacist. And we came back to the apartment complex and there was these two girls coming off the tennis court. And the guy with me says, hey, I'll take that one. You can have the other one. The other one <laughs> was Mary. And uh, so I walked up to her and I, I said, hello. And I said, oh, I know you from somewhere. And she goes, you don't know me. <laughs> Great line. <laughs> <laughs> So we, we started dating and on our second date, I asked her to marry me and she said, no, <laughs> actually she said it a little differently, but <laughs> she said no. And about a year later, we actually uh, did get married and uh, we had, she had two kids from her first marriage and uh, we then had three kids together, uh, moved to Tampa and I started a company, uh, actually my first drugstore. Uh, that we owned and uh, and kind of kind of grew it from there. Uh, and then you know how we came to Christ. Yeah. Now, are you going to tell everyone um, how it was that you did know her? Oh, yeah. <laughs> my favorite part of the whole story. <laughs> yeah. So, so about three four months after we're dating together, and uh, I said. Uh, I know where I, I saw you and she had a poster. She had exactly the same poster. And I said, I had that poster on my fraternity house room. She goes, no, you didn't. I said, yes, I did. And I pulled it out and believe it or not, I had markings all over it with dates and, and stuff like that. Um, and it sure enough, tack holes in it. <laughs> uh, yeah, she was one of the models on the poster. So, <laughs> So Mary, uh, uh, why did you say no when he asked you to marry him? <laughs> Do you want the truth? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's always a good thing uh, when we're, uh, now, by the way, our, our, uh, our uh, topic is come and see finding truth in a world of chaos. <laughs> so yeah, we like the truth and we know truth you, we good. know, we know your life has had some chaos. So uh, that's okay. We'll, we'll get to that. Yeah. Well, we were, we were not Christians when we first met, obviously. Right. Um, <laughs> I, said, I said, ask me when you're sober. <laughs> you know, we, had, we, we were drinking a lot that day. So. Yeah. <laughs> Jake was feeling pretty good. And you said, uh, not sure about that, right? True. Yes. Why, yeah. why, did you, why did you keep dating him? because oh, i really liked him okay <laughs> we did have fun yeah <laughs> that's good and you and you clearly played... god had a bigger plan <laughs> yeah. oh you, much bigger plan and yeah. you yeah. played you played tennis uh right um quite a bit right weren't you really good at it i did but no i was not really good but i really liked it yeah we know that jake was a great uh golfer uh you still are a pretty good golfer aren't you jake well, I, well, I have a single digit handicap, but I don't think I can play to it anymore. Yeah. Well, but, uh, he tried to teach me golf. Don't do that. Don't do that when you're married. <laughs> <laughs> but I enjoyed that too. I did play it for probably three, four years. Yeah. And really enjoyed it. I had a friend, we'd play nine holes. We'd get the kids out the door into school. We'd run outside, out, out in the golf course and play nine holes real quick. It was fun. Yeah. Well, that's exciting. So as you got married and you came to know Christ, um, what, what were some of the God moments then? Because uh, it sounds like you had, uh, uh, you know, a couple kids already, and then you started having your own kids. Uh, by the time you were, uh, did you have all five kids by the time you were, uh, came to know Christ? Yes. 
Yeah. Actually, I was 30. I had five children. Okay. So wow. you, you had the young kids. Um, what were some of the kind of cool God moments as you, uh, uh, you know, matured in your career, Jake, and, you know, you as your, as in your family, you know, what were some cool things that happened? Probably one of the most interesting ones, one of the companies I had started, uh, I originally built out a facility with a, a couple of pharmacists that were going to bring their companies and we're going to merge them together into this facility. And uh, they got into a tiff with each other and walked and I ended up with an empty facility. So actually, uh, we were trying to go to market for natural hormone replacement at that time. And the doctors knew nothing about it. They, it just mm -hmm. was very difficult, difficult getting traction. Mm -hmm. So my CFO came to me one day and he said, uh, uh, we're not gonna make payroll on, uh, on Friday. And I said, okay. I said, then we better uh, seriously uh, consider praying about that. <laughs> And uh, I, he said, well, when do you want to do that? And I said, right now. And in my office, I had a big glass pane of glass. And the CFO, my brother, and myself got on our knees, and we sat there and prayed about 15 minutes. And all of our employees could see what we were doing. And I don't know what they thought, but they knew, they knew we were Christians. But... The next day, a guy walks in and says, I want to sell you my business. And I, I said, well, he actually had called me a couple hours after we had prayed. And, mm -hmm. and I said, you said, I need to, I got, I got to come and talk to you. I got a problem. I'd like to sell you my business. I said, well, bring your income statement, your balance sheet, and let's, let's talk. I, he had worked for me in the past, but he had started on his own uh, and was doing pretty well, as I understood. So... He gets there, he shuts the door, and he said, I have a real serious problem I can't solve. And I said, what is that? And he said, one of my pharmacists is addicted to uh, mm. morphine. And I'm short a kilo of morphine. Ooh. And That's that. I have to report that to the DEA. And I said, yes, you do. He said, Jake, I can't do it. Is, kilo, is said, a kilo a lot, a lot Jake? 2.2 pounds. <laughs> Wow. Oh, wow. Oh. So I said, listen, uh, if I buy your business, that will be the first thing I will do is basically tell the DEA that we're short a kilo of morphine. He goes, I understand that. I understand we have to do that. So I looked at his balance sheet. I looked at his income statement and I go, what do you want for your business? He said, I tell you what, give me a four-year employment contract and 20% of your business, because I know you can go grow this business. And he had a pile of cash on his balance sheet. And we closed in probably seven days. <laughs> oh, my goodness. And we built that company actually into a $50 million company. So, wow. Uh, but God provided the payroll that next week. <laughs> And I love it, it. numerous, numerous things like that. Uh, uh, our youngest daughter was hospitalized for severe Crohn's. Uh, the doctor wanted to put her on a chemotherapy. And uh, I said, no. And the doctor said, you don't understand. Your daughter could die. And I said, no, we're not putting on chemotherapy. You will make her infertile. She goes, yes, I know that, but she's going to, she could potentially die. And, uh, we, uh, I refused to let them do it. Uh, quite obviously with lots of prayer and, uh, uh, we just got our, our, uh, 10th, no, she, number nine granddaughter. <laughs> Actually, she's had two children, two beautiful mm -hmm. children out of that. And we were just talking about that earlier mm -hmm. about that, that simple blessing that, mm. uh, it's like Tiffany, the, the the boss that she currently has, she got a new boss and he or she actually had the same issues that Tiffany had almost. And um, she went ahead and chose to do the biologics. No, the methotrexate. No, okay, that. And um, to this day, I don't think she's able to have children. Mm. So, so cool when Tiffany thanked Jake 
Oh, how sweet. We're allowing her not to go on there. Mm. And right. how is her Crohn's, if you don't mind me asking? She still struggles with that. Mm -hmm. um, and But we, we we counsel with each other. Now, my daughter is a PharmD. She's got a doctorate in pharmacology. And a, wow. a few daughters have had that. And I'm, I only have a BS, literally. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, but uh, we have agreed to, uh, not to go on biologicals. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, she's been doing it with diet, exercise, et cetera. And oh, good for her. At about 90% success. She still mm -hmm. has challenges and stuff like that. It's a really, really difficult uh, disease state. Right. It's, it's two healthy children, which is. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. wonderful. I love that God, how God just guided you through that. That's We've been so in a lot of talking about how specific God can give us answers as we abide and ask him on things and just lead us to his best and none better. And that's an, an exact example of that, you know? Yeah, it's beautiful. So, um, as you, uh, you know, grew in your marriage and your family and, uh, tell, tell us, uh, how did, uh, uh, you learn about abiding? Uh, what does that look like for you two? Uh, and then how does that play into the process of going to unity and making decisions together, uh, and what difference has that made in your marriage? Oh, that's that's a big long question. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Totally saved our marriage. <laughs> totally saved our marriage. Yeah, it, it, oh my gosh. we were both Christians and and each walking with the Lord, but in the wrong directions. <laughs> <laughs> so, long story short, on the uh, really meeting Rich and Linda. Uh, a friend of mine, David Dunkel, kept telling me, Jake, you need to go to Israel. You need to go to Israel. And I go, Dave, they're blowing, people are blowing each other up in Israel. <laughs> so we had, we typically have two family vacations a year. One was to go for a week snow skiing, and then one week of going lobstering in yeah. the Keys. Yeah, mm. and uh, it's interesting. We were Mary and I were just talking about that. How much our kids enjoy doing that together, and have been really good fellowship with our kids, uh, even as adults. Our youngest child is now thirty six, I think. Will be so. It, it's fun to see them as an adults really enjoying each other's company. Mm. So, I uh, it was funny as we. My administrative assistant had booked our flight on, I think it was Southwest, and I, I think we were going to Utah at this time. And uh, for whatever reason, we decided to go on the same flight one of our kids and their kids, uh, their children were on. So Vicki had to change the flight, and it ended up we were the last two tickets on the airplane. <laughs> so I ended up on a seat about row 22, and Mary ended up in the middle row right in front of the bathrooms in row oh, wow. 32. <laughs> <laughs> she was not a happy king. <laughs> so I'll let Mary finish the, that part of the story. Um, well, I tried to change that seat several times before I got on the plane, but it, nothing worked. And I got on the plane and I'm walking to the back and as God would have it, he sets me between a married man and woman. And I said, do y'all want to sit together? Cause I don't mind. And they go, oh no, she's a window on an aisle. And I'm like, <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> and they had just returned from Israel and were telling me all about the trip. How oh, wow. Was. And I said, we've had the offer to you know go and they go you gotta do it and so they convinced me that whole trip all the way back home to tampa and they they were just the loveliest couple and so reassuring and loving and kind and shared all this information so when we got off the plane i told jake i said i think we need to be in israel we need to go on this trip but um, we didn't know who Richard and Linda Case were. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so those were some thoughts going through our head. It's like, wow. But, so, yeah. so I called uh, Dunkel and I said, hey, Dave, do you still have a spot? And he said, I don't think there is a spot, but I'll check it. 
So he called Richard and somebody had just canceled. That's right. Yep. And oh, so we did their position for basically the hotel up in Ramat, up by Galilee, yeah. and then also at the King David yep. down in, in the old Jerusalem area. Uh, so we ended up booking it. I think it it was like two, a week or half later. I mean, yeah. it was really quick. Yeah, it was fast. It was quick. And just before we uh, are getting on the airplane and somebody blew up a bus in downtown <laughs> Jerusalem or something. Mm. That's right. And we're going like, what mm. is, oh, are you sure we're supposed to be going? So Rich had set up a cat taxi to pick us up at Tel Aviv Airport. Uh, and I didn't really look at a map too closely of where the heck we were going. But if you've been in Israel, there's such a thing as the West Bank. And you don't go through the West Bank, you go <laughs> on the West Bank. <laughs> so we ended up for, oh, it had to be a two hour cab ride yeah, that's right. up to the top of Galilee, top of Israel. And, and uh, uh, but long story short, we met Rich and Linda. We met a number of other uh, leaders that were just starting the abiding process. Mm. Uh, yeah. It is, it was a, life-changing two weeks in Israel. And anybody that has never been there to walk where Christ has walked, he did his miracles, uh, it, it just brings it to life. You're yes. on the sea of Galilee. Mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, you can feel the presence. You're sitting on, on the, uh, and of course the Catholic church built a church every place Jesus did a, a miracle or something like that. So, we, we would go to these different places and then Richard would read the, the scripture and then we just look and just experience oh, it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. spirit. Yeah. That was just phenomenal. One thing I left out was um, in between the time we booked, I had eaten something not good for myself on the airplane. So I was oh, no. sick. Yep. And David assured me, he goes, Mary, when you get to Israel, we're all going to lay hands on you and pray on over you. And oh my gosh, we walked in and that's the first thing we did. They uh, prayed over me, yeah. which was amazing. Yeah. And um, through the whole trip. Yeah. It, it was, yeah. it was in, uh, just a phenomenal trip. And, and uh, Rich and Linda just became great friends of ours. And mm. uh, I, I think Oh, I don't know how many retreats we've done together. Had to be 15 yeah. at least. Yeah, and now you guys are leading them. Yes. Uh, giving uh, it away, so that's pretty cool. And, uh, yeah, we've had, uh, we've led uh, a couple of them up here in North Carolina, uh, four or five of them. And uh, uh, in Tampa, when we were living on the beach, and then COVID had quite obviously happened. Yeah. Mm. We, we haven't done another one in Tampa, but we're uh, scheduling now for another one up here and uh, you know the normal challenges of being an hour away from civilization is good and bad mm -hmm. the, the good part is the people are away from everything uh the bad part is you know you can't get a vendor to come up and do stuff <laughs> but that's not that's not the end of the world either but yeah. and as you've learned um about abiding you know walking with god um how how have you uh, learn to uh, let the Holy Spirit guide you into unity and seeking God's will and you know how how has that worked for you you two well just just on what it teaches I mean it, if you really go through the, the simple layout of the Friday to set Sunday program there's less than 30 verses every every Christian's already heard these verses there's nothing new there the thing is, it's in context of what it's teaching you and how you're walking through it, you know, and then why it's so important of getting to unity, on getting forgiveness, on getting joy, the superabundance. I mean, if, if you really, the, and the verses just speak to you. I mean, it's just, and they're so simple. And, I, and I, I remember coming back from, I think, the second or third time we did it, I came back to Tampa and I told a number of different uh, business people uh, what we were doing. And I said, I can sit down with the McKinsey and Company consultant every morning 
and get the best advice from the creator of the universe. <laughs> Why would you not want to do that for mm. your business, for your marriage, uh, for your kids, uh, for your, the, your, I mean, the people you would come in contact with? I mean, why would you not want to do that? Mm. Uh, and, and the impact you can have, the impact it was in our lives was just been phenomenal. Um, we, we wait, my type A wanted to make a decision immediately. Uh, and I would make a decision. And it's, it's much better by sitting, listening to what my wife has to say. And a lot of times, okay, that means to slow down. We're not on the same page. We're not hearing the same thing. Uh, and when we do hear the same thing, we kind of look at each other like, how did that happen? <laughs> uh, we were uh, just before COVID, uh, a, a missionary that we support had come to us and he was worried about, uh, he was getting throat cancer. Actually, he's an evangelist uh, to black youth. Uh, and he said, Jake and Mary he said, I really need you to pray for me because I'm not going to be able to speak for three to four months. He mm -hmm. said, and I, he basically makes his living for, uh, by, you know, doing these different outreach things. Uh, and then he'll, he'll get a, a, some type of stipend or whatever. So we said, RV, well, let us figure out what Holy Spirit wants us to, how he wants us to help you. And Mary and I prayed on it, and we came back with identical number. Yeah, wow. I mean, just identical number. And we go, <laughs> quite obviously, that's what it was. And mm -hmm. we wrote a check to him, and I said, RV, you take the three months off. You take the four months off. This should cover you for your four months of all your expenses. So, mm -hmm. uh, And it's just a blessing. It was just a pure blessing that we could do it. Uh, just the superabundance that God has given us. Yep. And as you uh, talk about your abiding, um, uh, each of you describe a little bit. Uh, uh, I know that you, you do this every morning uh, in terms of your time in the word. What does that look like uh, for you, Jake, and then for you, Mary? When you get in the word uh, and you said you hear from God and process, what, is that, what does that look like for you? Well, normally I, I start out with what what I have done the prior couple of days and kind of see where I'm I'm lacking or I'm not hearing or or whatever. I uh, and then I'm saying, is there really something you want to say to me today? And a lot of times, the, a verse will do that, but there's other things will pick my interest or something. Uh, even it could have been an email that I'd gotten. Uh, the night before or whatever. Uh, and sometimes I think it's off on a rabbit trail, but he'll lead me right back to where he wants me to go. Uh, and just that back to my A-type personality, you know, I, I want answers and God's not a genie in a bottle. You know, that that's not what it's about. And probably the biggest thing for me is patience and waiting. Uh, and, and the blessing of that. And a lot of times I have a good answer, but I don't necessarily have the best answer. Uh, and, and patience is, that's, that's a continual learning process. <laughs> Do you journal? Uh, does that include journaling for you? Yeah, I'm not a, I'm not a big writer, but uh, I will pick topics. And then Phil, go from that topic on, on what do you have to say about this? Yeah. Know, what are where are you leading me here, Lord? You know, how do I stay in the kingdom with you? Um, you know, it's it, I I don't write a lot. That that's my my challenge. Yeah. Uh, yeah. How about you, Mary? How's that? What does that look like for you? Well, I'm excited in the morning. So I, I'm always I'm a quiet person. Don't talk to me because I don't like to talk in the morning. But... <laughs> I'm excited to see what God has for me and mm. and to listen to what he has to say. I, I I like love notes. I call them love notes. If I've been, I look back to where I've been and what answers I'm needing and what I want to be hearing from him or I would like to be hearing from him. And I, he just gives you love notes. I mean, it's like I got up to go eat 
grab something and I came back and the, the, what had been on my heart, I turn on the praise music and oh my gosh, the, the, the chaos in the election was a big deal to me. I yeah. know because I know God's got it, but it was still bothering me. And mm -hmm. I, I came back, got my something to drink, came back and turned on the praise and it was turn your eyes upon Jesus was this song that was playing and it was like wow okay I can do that you know this is what I can do so you know that that took care of my need of um just the chaos yeah that's been going on. yeah that's beautiful it does great things like that I know that when I'll pray um or when I'm reading and doing my abiding his word is so so powerful and so strong and it, it's hard to stop actually you mm -hmm. said over 20 minutes oh my gosh we can sit there for probably two or three hours yeah yeah not come out of our rooms you know it's um it's hard to to make us go away yep what do do the two of you have a time that you typically like a standard time that you share some of what you're abiding on or um is it just kind of organic throughout the day throughout the week what is your how do you work it as a couple Mine is breakfast because when I've when I've received what I've gotten, mm -hmm. I can't hold it in, and so I go out. And by that time, I'm ready to talk. <laughs> yeah, I'll share with Jake. You know, pretty much, I, we don't have a set time, but you can't help but share it. Just very organic, yeah. Usually, when I have a big breakthrough. I come in and bust it. I go, like, <laughs> got to hear this. Yeah. This is what happened. This is where it's at. Did I, this is what I just heard. Um, and, and, but we, we're walking through the day. Um, mm -hmm. I, we've, we, because we're up here in the, in the boondocks, which is nice, we really can spend a lot of time together. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, we've spent more time together Wow, oh, in the last two years, and we did our whole married life, I think. Yeah, so. beautiful. There was one thing that um, we were discussing earlier today on abiding, what, we, what we've gotten out of it, is I've learned to not try to convince him of anything and, and not badger him until he does what I'm wanting him to do. <laughs> so we had some, we had a lot of trees here, and I was... Okay been worried about them with the storms and everything because I know summer is windy and rainy. And so I tried to keep my mouth quiet. And every time a new person would come in the house, I'd say, see those trees over there? Do you think they should come down that they might get the solar <laughs> panel in the battery house? And so I got everybody else's feedback. And then we, we woke up one morning and looked out the window and it's like an angel had placed one of those big pine trees right between the battery house and the solar panel. Wow. Oh, it would have destroyed if it, it would have went destroyed. five feet either direction. And he goes, okay, we're taking some trees. <laughs> <laughs> so so uh, God got your attention, huh, Jake? And it was, and it was a big tree. I, I just do not. Yeah. You couldn't have placed it there from where. No. The, the wow. So, As you guys yeah. um uh, our processing decisions and, uh, you know, we're all seeking God's will. Um, how, what's the role of the Holy Spirit, uh, uh, particularly when you look at, you don't necessarily agree at first is like, yeah, well, different thoughts about what the decision should be, which is typical by the way of most couples, um, and healthy. How do you get to unity, uh, and, and follow the, the Holy Spirit? Well, <laughs> <laughs> we don't make any decisions until we both. We're on the same page. Yeah. We, yeah. We, I guess when we first started, we took it to a two five three of, of trying to make all the decisions that way. And that's not what God's talking about. God's talking about the, the major decisions that you need to make. So we would come together and say, where are you at? This is what I think. What do you think? Uh, and usually we were one or the other was disjointed. Um, and uh, we'd pray on it. And, and 
I wouldn't force um, a decision like I used to. Um, it's, it's much more, all right, I need to hear what she has to say. Even though in my opinion, I don't think it may be relevant to that issue, uh, but I know that God eventually will get her to that issue or my better understanding of what I think that issue is. And a lot of times because we don't, we're not on the same page is we're really not talking about the same issue. Yeah. I mean, hmm. it's interesting. It's, and, and a lot of times the issue is what, not what we thought it was the issue. The issue is really something else. Yeah. 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 Um, I, I mean, I look back in my career of some of the decisions that I wish I would have listened to her. Uh, mm -hmm. it, it would have been very advantageous instead of very detrimental to a business, <laughs> uh, especially picking partners. Uh, I, hmm. There's a couple of partners that I picked. Oh yeah, because he can do the job. Yeah, but I don't like it. No, no, no. Now, he's really smart. He, he's got these credentials. I don't like it. Now I'm, speaking of business like partners. <laughs> Speaking so, of business partners, do you mind if I ask? I know you and Rich are now in a business venture together with his daughter, Michelle, and have started up a business. How did that come about? And how did God bring you guys all together in unity on what that was going to be and, and what your adventure is now? Well, it, it's really exciting, actually, uh, to run a business uh, with Rich and Michelle, and I don't have to do the day-to-day. -day. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> And uh, when Rich and I, Rich had helped me with uh, a couple of the businesses I had of positioning people in the right place and, and getting the right people on the bus and, and developing some marketing programs and helping me with sales and uh, some sales and marketing people and personnel and, and uh, concepts and stuff like that. And, you know, you'd always ask the question, have you thought of this or have you thought of this? Uh, now, actually, uh, with him as a partner, uh, and it, it's interesting, some of the new employees that we'll be bringing on as we acquire these different companies will see a totally different type of management mm -hmm. where it's not a, a, a top-down management. You know, I, get, I, as a senior executive, get input, I make a decision. It's now more collaborative yeah. On getting input, uh, preying on that. Now, eventually, we're going to teach these people abiding. Beautiful. Uh, so, uh, God's brought us actually every owner that we've had that we've purchased so far has been a Christian. Yeah. Mm. So, I mean, and we haven't tried to do that, but I, I think God is building the base first. Uh, and uh, we have in our pipeline right now. A number of very nice businesses and they are Christians and uh, actually some key personnel that we're going to bring into corporate uh, uh, and both of them are, are strong Christians so and they're young they're they're young to the point where I mean 45 <laughs> but uh, what a perfect age to really learn abiding and really mm. understanding is you know you have the God of the universe ha can help you decide on decisions each day, why mm. would you not use that? Uh, instead of don't lean on your own understanding. I mean, mm -hmm. you, you got God to help you. Um, it, it's really exciting. It's it's exciting to have Michelle running the day to day, and and uh, uh, Richard and I being on the on the M and A side, and and uh, and we have a good partner, our finance, our, our private equity firm. The leader of that is a Christian. Uh, and uh, the, the funny thing about that is I tell him I knew his wife before he did. <laughs> she actually was a, a girlfriend. Uh, she went to high school with one of my daughters. So uh, she's, so older. She's, she's a little bit older, older yeah. but, uh, but uh, it, it, it's really been a, a good situation. Hmm. And, and businesses have challenges and, and, and we'll, we will have challenges. We know that, but uh, that's, that's part of how the game is played. Yes. I love though, that even in the business world, now you have the ability to come together in unity with the Holy Spirit as you make these decisions and just what a blessing that's going to be on this business going forward. Yeah. It's, uh, it's really remarkable. Yeah, it, it is remarkable. 
Uh, and of course, Dave Dunkel had shown that you can do it in a public company. So we easily can do it in a private company. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we've seen, uh, uh, Jake, and you can testify um, uh, as we, uh, all the way through it. Um, we've seen miraculous stuff happen, Kathy uh, and Mary. Mm -hmm. uh, and Mary knows because we all pray about it. Linda and I and Jake and Mary pray. And um, there's been things that, <laughs> well, Father, what are you going to do about this one? You know, and. Uh, mm -hmm. Uh, and all of a sudden there's an answer, you know, and there's a insight wisdom of, and, and the cool thing, it's unity, uh, mm -hmm. that, you know, Jake says, well, I'm, I'm feel I'm sensing this, you know, and, and the Holy spirit is saying, you know, this is, this is the way to go. Let me show you, let me give you, let me, let me answer this question for you. Uh, with, and that's how we approach it, uh, is, well, let's just go at Cause like Jake said, <laughs> well, since God knows the answer, why don't we just go ask him? <laughs> mm -hmm. Um, and it's quite, uh, quite exciting to do that together. Uh, and by the way, Jake, I found out, uh, something interesting about Ben. He was in Colorado here, uh, having lunch with us and, uh, you know what he loves doing? Lobstering in Key West. Oh, oh yeah. Wow. yeah. You, you guys are going to have to do that with us sometime. We are. Yeah. So I, t so he, uh, he said, yeah, we should all go down there and do lobstering and, uh, uh, and of course, Tori, uh, who's our CFO, uh, wants to come down and do that. But she'd like to play golf. She, she's a, she's almost a scratch golfer too. So, uh, yeah, we're gonna have a golf tournament, Kathy, someday. <laughs> uh, and as you, um, you know, look at that, uh, your life going forward, you know, what what is bringing joy uh, to you two, just as as how you now have found what I call your sweet spot. Um, you know, what, what does that joy look like for you guys? Well, we're big as family, yeah. uh, without, yeah. without a doubt. I mean, we've been blessed with, uh, 10 healthy grandchildren, mm -hmm. uh, and they do keep us busy. In mm -hmm. fact, I think it was last week, uh, Richard called me and we are talking about something. He goes, what the heck is in the background? <laughs> <laughs> We have five grandkids over here right now. <laughs> he goes, it sounds like a heck of a lot more than that. And I said, oh, yeah. Last year was a blessing because talk about super abundance. God gave us three granddaughters within a year. Oh, and how sweet. So cute and so sweet to see them. They're like triplets. They are. Mm -hmm. so wow. They were here. It's <laughs> fun. Well, we, uh, we've really enjoyed, go ahead, Jake. Yeah, just a joy of, of life, of, of building a life together with your spouse mm. that after, you know, we've been married now, we'll be 42 years this year. Uh, and probably the first 25 were very challenging. And mm. even though 10 of those were, we were Christians, but they were still challenging. I mean, uh, abiding has really brought us into, like I said, forgiveness and, and mm. joy and unity and yeah. uh, super abundance that uh, we can step into the kingdom and, and really be protected by the Holy Spirit. Or you can sit and live in the world that's fallen and, and get all the darts and, and fiery arrows and everything else in Ephesians 6. I mean, mm -hmm. I think it's, uh, it's just easier life. Uh, being in, <laughs> being in, uh, in walking in the kingdom, uh, being on the path. Yeah. You guys have an exciting path and uh, it's uh, amazing how God brought us together to do it together. So it's really, it's really fun in all kinds of ways with, the retreats and the business and just being friends and you know there's just a uh, sweetness about life that we get to share mm -hmm. together that's a community of god you know just walking together and the beautiful thing well we really appreciate you uh sharing your stories uh it's so exciting to us and you know kathy you can you're going to testify how precious it is to to hear you know what we try to teach and and they say well here's mm -hmm. how, here's how we live it you know and Right. That, that's that's a testimony of, of God's work. So, yeah, absolutely. And if you guys have found today encouraging, I just want to ask you to be a friend and tell a friend, invite others to join us on this journey. Um, our guest days are one of our favorites as we get to see um, God exalted and faith lived out. And so that's a beautiful thing. And we are now coming into our um, 
good time, good time end times Fridays right. <laughs> where we're talking about end times. And so that's going to be coming up um, soon too. And looking forward to all that we have to share. So just continue to join us and thanks for joining us, Jake and Mary, you guys are yeah. just a blessing. Yeah. 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 Thanks. Thanks for uh, being here. And uh, uh, Jake, uh, we'll be talking to you soon. <laughs> about stuff uh so uh everybody hope you have a good good day and uh we'll look forward to tomorrow which is which is end times friday and uh we'll be talking about uh, that as well so we're excited thanks again uh jake and mary thank you have a great day everyone thank you for joining us for today's episode of come and see your podcast for truth in a world of chaos brought to you by all for jesus living waters ministry send us your questions and comments and tune in tomorrow for more answers to your personal questions about living life in God's truth. Remember, God's will is best and none better. His truth brings peace in this world of chaos.